This is A Course in Miracles, Manual for Teachers, Part 26, Can God Be Reached Directly? God indeed can be reached directly, for there is no distance between him and his Son. His awareness is in everyone's memory, and his word is written on everyone's heart. Yet this awareness and this memory can arise across the threshold of recognition only where all barriers to truth have been removed. And how many is this the case? Here then is the role of God's teachers. They too have not attained the necessary understanding as yet, but they have joined with others. This is what sets them apart from the world, and it is this that enables others to leave the world with them. Alone they are nothing, but in their joining is the power of God. There are those who have reached God directly, retaining no trace of worldly limits and remembering their own identity perfectly. These might be called the teachers of teachers because, although they are no longer visible, their image can yet be called upon, and they will appear when and where it is helpful for them to do so. To those to whom such appearances would be frightening, they give their ideas. No one can call on them in vain, nor is there anyone of whom they are unaware. All needs are known to them, and all mistakes are recognized and overlooked by them. The time will come when this is understood. And meanwhile, they give all their gifts to the teachers of God who look to them for help, asking all things in their name and in no other. Sometimes the teacher of God may have a brief experience of a direct union with God. In this world, it is almost impossible that this endure. It can perhaps be one after much devotion and dedication, and then be maintained for much of the time on earth, but this is so rare that can, it cannot be considered a realistic goal. If it happens, so be it. If it does not happen, so be it as well. All worldly states must be illusory. If God were reached directly in sustained awareness, the body would no, would not be long maintained. Those who have laid the body down merely to extend their helpfulness to those remaining behind are few indeed, and they need helpers who are still in bondage and still asleep, so that by their awakening can God's voice be heard. Do not despair, then, because of limitations. It is your function to escape from them, but not to be without them. If you would be heard by those who suffer, you must speak their language. If you would be a savior, you must understand what needs to be escaped. Salvation is not theoretical. Behold the problem, ask for the answer, and then accept it when it comes. Nor will its coming be long delayed. All the help you can accept will be provided, and not one need you have will not be met. Let us not, then, be too concerned with goals for which you are not ready. God takes you where you are and welcomes you. What more could you desire when this is all you need? Can God be reached directly? The short answer is yes, because there's no distance between him and his son. And it says, alone they are nothing, but in their joining is the power of God. And that is about God's teachers. That is about probably anyone who's watching this or listening to this is that if you're in the role of being God's teacher, then the point is that we don't need to think of ourselves as, as separate from everybody else because the power of God is comes with the oneness, comes with the wholeness, comes with the joining, and not the illusion of being separate. And this is really important and I feel that there are a lot of teachers, and I think I've had that experience myself where thinking that maybe I'm better or I'm above or I'm at different levels than other people or other teachers even. And therefore, you know, I, I feel some sense of satisfaction, but realizing that that's not that's not real, that that's actually the ego wanting to feel special, wanting to feel better than or separate from everybody else. And I feel like this is quite important to recognize that the joining, the joining is where the power is of God. And if you really have joining with God as your goal, 
then it's going to be pretty meaningless, the different levels or who is closer to God or not. And it says, there are those who have reached God directly, retaining no trace of worldly limits and remembering their own identity perfectly. These might be called the teachers of teachers. Because although they're no longer visible, their image can yet be called upon. And they appear when and where it is helpful for them to do so. The teachers of teachers, I would say, could be those in the fifth plane, using theta healing terms. And the fifth plane is where different beings are. Um, you might use the term ascended masters. So they're those who have um, <laughs> reached God directly, but then aren't in this world anymore, in this form, but can remain sort of reachable in the fifth plane for those of us that are still here in the third plane in this worldly existence. In my understanding of uh, the teachers that are in the fifth plane, the ascended masters or the teachers of teachers, it's that they kind of hang out there because part of their awakening, part of their complete connection with God is dependent on everybody else who's, who's still perceiving themselves here on the third plane. And so it's not until everyone, no one, no mind is left behind to be able to then fully join with God. So that's my understanding of that. And then it says, sometimes a teacher of God may have a brief experience of direct union with God. In this world, it is almost impossible that this endure. I feel that that's pretty accurate in that a lot of people have maybe these moments or uh, hours or moments in time where they feel completely connected with God, but it is really rare to witness those that are just constantly in connection. It's a, it's a lot easier to be connected with God from a sort of higher vibrational place, as in beyond this world. It's hard to be able to let go of things of this world. Um, and so for those of us that are still here, that are still very much perceiving that we're here, it's important to be realistic. And it says um, it's so rare for um, a teacher of God to have that direct union with God that it cannot be considered a realistic goal. If it happens, so be it. If it does not happen, so be it as well. All worldly states must be illusory. So just accepting that if we're perceiving ourselves here, um, it's basically like not denying the fact that we perceive ourselves here. Because if we were to lie to ourselves and think, oh, yes, I feel completely connected with God, yet in your day-to-day -day experience, you feel like crap or you feel really upset all the time, you're probably not being honest with yourself. And so I think that's a really important aspect is just being honest with where you are and to not have this unrealistic goal, um, basically don't feel bad for being where you are because ultimately that leads to feeling guilt and therefore not being connected with God. So it says, do not despair then because of limitations. It is your function to escape from them, but not to be without them. And I think that is so key because I see plenty of people who are deep on their spiritual path who maybe have this notion of who they are or who they think that they are, which might be like this perfect image of, oh, yes, I'm like, I meditate all day long and la la la. Um, but realizing that again, we're here. We're perceiving ourselves here and this line, it's your function to escape from them, but not to be without them. So we experience limitations throughout our days in 
in the interactions and the relationships in the relationships that we have with people, but also with the world and whatever might be happening in the world. And it's not to pretend that we don't have these limitations or that we don't perceive these limitations, but to basically meet ourselves where we are and realize that we can be kind and compassionate to ourselves every step of the way. And I think that's such an important aspect that a lot of people maybe overlook or like push themselves too hard to be perfect in, in the, the sort of spiritual world. I think there's a lot of people that think that, that think that they're supposed to be perfect or if they're in a position of being a teacher, that they're not supposed to have limitations or they're not supposed to have faults or they're not supposed to have difficulties. And that's just not true. And I think one of the best ways that we can be teachers is by exposing our limitations, by sharing our experiences, because it's through that, through those vulnerabilities that we can actually show others that it's okay to have them and maybe to be able to show how to navigate through that and how to then at some point transcend it or to escape from it. So I hope that some teachers out there remember that it's so important to be kind, to be loving, to be accepting of yourself wherever you are, wherever you perceive yourself to be, whatever difficulties you're experiencing, that's okay. <laughs> and I'll go ahead and expose. I've had some crazy ass shit <laughs> in my life. And some of the, the darkest, most difficult places that I've gone to in my mind have actually been where I've received some of the biggest blessings because the larger the conflict or the tension, it's actually the larger that we're denying ourselves from love or from God. And so if we can basically hand over that experience, surrender to the experience, then we have the ability then to receive the blessings and learnings that we really, that our souls really want to learn and to receive from those experiences. So you might want to reflect and think about what were some of the most difficult experiences of your life and what were all the blessings that you received through that and what were all the learnings and what are all the positives that you've gotten from it. And you can usually see that there's a, a very high correlation between the most difficult things and what you might perceive as the most positive aspects of yourself. And so <laughs> definitely don't try to deny those difficulties, those limitations. That's really where all these miracles are just waiting for you to accept them. And again, being in the position of a teacher of God, if you, if you have students or others that are on the journey with you, it can be such a huge opportunity for everybody to release themselves from the pain and the guilt and the suffering that everyone may have collectively experienced. So it says, if you would be heard by those who suffer, you must speak their language. If you would be a savior, you must understand what needs to be escaped. And behold the problem, ask for the answer, and then accept it when it comes. All the help you can accept will be provided, and not one need you have will not be met. Let us not then be too concerned with goals for which you are not ready. God takes you where you are and welcomes you. Ah. <laughs> So what I get from this is that you must speak their language, as in um, meet people where they are, meet yourself where you are. Don't try to, you know, this term spiritually bypass. Don't, don't deny what you're really feeling, but speak that language. And so, yes, this little phrase here, behold the problem 
ask for the answer, and then accept it when it comes. Puts it so simply where, again, don't deny the problem. Accept the problem. Behold the problem. Then ask for the answer and then accept it when it comes. And we don't need to have the answers. We don't need to have the answers, just repeating that, because it's actually just about stepping aside and asking, and then also being open to receiving the answer and trusting that we can receive the answers as we need it and when we need it. And that's something that I've learned a lot with the healing work I've done with Theta Healing and with other forms of healing as well, is that often I'll be confronted or faced with somebody's problem or issue that, you know, in my logical, rational, conscious mind, I have no idea. I would have no idea how to solve that. I could come up with answers, but that's not going to give a real solution. And so the only way I have learned to always have an answer is I have to step aside and ask for help. And it is always answered. It is always answered. Whatever needs to be said, whatever needs to be done, it's always there. We have the ability to ask for help and to receive it. So yeah, let us not be too concerned with goals for which you are not ready. God takes you where you are and welcomes you. I think that sometimes, and something that's been happening in my life, is I'll have goals in my mind that are maybe uh, quite a stretch. (laughs) And realizing that if they're too far and I haven't achieved them or I haven't gotten them, uh, it might be that I'm not ready for it. And the resistance of being ready for it as well. Like uh, I'll give an example of running a very sort of simple and tangible practical goal. But in the past, I used to run a lot. I've run a marathon and many half marathons without needing a lot of training. And in the recent few years, I haven't done a lot of running, partly because where I live in Peru, um, it's not exactly conducive to running with rocky roads and dogs that will chase you. (laughs) So... Anyways, I've gotten out of practice of running and recently I went on a jog and I'm used to having a particular time for, for a mile. And the first time after a very long time of running, I realized that there's no way that I could achieve those goals that I wanted in my mind because I just wasn't trained for it. My body hadn't been uh, trained for Um, achieving that. And so instead of resisting and feeling bad about the fact that I'm not at that goal that I'm used to or where I think I should be, it was actually more useful to take a step back and just come to a comfortable pace that feels good. And in the enjoyment of feeling good, that's how we can kind of build up to be able to achieve our goals. So then they're not that far reaching but it's more like this gradual process. And I think that that's a nice metaphor for our spiritual journey and our spiritual growth, that sometimes we have these moments of insights where we're like, oh my gosh, I get it. I, this me is the ego and this is God. And I just need to get rid of the ego and therefore I'll be with God. And then you end up spending years feeling miserable because you think that you should be so perfectly pristine in your mind and you're not yet. And I think that this is useful so that we can (laughs) not be too concerned with the goals which you are not ready and to accept that God takes you where you are and welcomes you. So that's all for today. Thank you so much. Bye for now.